Christina Stefanski. Uh, she's the communications manager for the Canadian, Canadian Apprenticeship Forum, or CAF, and it's a national not-for-profit organization uh, that works with stakeholders in apprenticeship across the country. As Mac mentioned, I'm Christina Stefanski. I'm the communications manager of CAF. I'm very pleased to be invited here uh, to be here with you today to share some of the key benefits of apprenticeship training and really start the dialogue about how we can better engage various stakeholders in apprenticeship. We are a nonprofit. We are a member organization that connects Canada's national apprenticeship community. Our participants work collaboratively to support vibrant and innovative apprenticeship systems and policies. So our stakeholders involve everything from employers to unions, equity seeking groups, educational institutions and jurisdictions to support CAF through membership. To begin uh, with the very first topic, what is apprenticeship? I appreciate that all of you understand um, the technical training portion and the on the job training. But an interesting stat that CAF um, found through its 15 years of research on this topic is that apprenticeship training is the program of choice for over 35,000 employers across Canada. So that's over 120,000 apprentices and 300,000 active journey persons in Ontario. There are many benefits to apprenticeship training and I really want to focus on that with you today. Um, some of the key benefits include earn while you learn, obtain certification, receive good pay, and explore exciting career opportunities. I really want to help you and, and the employers that you work with, if you're not an employer, um, to find ways to really implement a successful apprenticeship program. As part of CAF's extensive resources that we offer to both members and non-members, I would like to share these key 10 steps. So number one. Decide what skills you need and what you can provide. So, to begin, clearly define what role an apprentice could play in your business. What occupation and types of jobs do you want them for? And what knowledge and skills will they need? Make sure you have safe facilities and tools for training this trade. Then talk to your staff and identify a journey person capable and committed to training an apprentice to your standards and your business requirements. Number two, find an apprentice. That's the question of the day. Decide what qualifications the applicant will need for this occupation. These should be clear, objective, and provide equal opportunity. Then look first within to promote. This will build loyalty within your company. If there is no one suitable on staff, look for qualified candidates with the help of your apprenticeship office, union, trade, or industry association, secondary school boards, and local colleges and training institutions. You can also advertise in newspapers or internet sites such as Workopolis. Number three, register your apprentice. Once you have accepted an application, contact your local apprenticeship authority office and register your new employee as an apprentice. You'll be asked to sign a legal apprentice agreement that outlines everyone's responsibilities so everyone's on the same page. It, spe it specifies the length of training and supervision provided, the related instruction required and skills to be learned. In Ontario specifically, there is a regulation that prescribes wage rates for 29 construction trades. You will also be given information for certification for your apprentice. Number four, receive training materials. Your apprenticeship authority office will need to approve and monitor your program to make sure it follows provincial and territorial regulations and abides by the terms of your apprenticeship agreement. They will work with you to develop a schedule that meets apprenticeship standards for the occupation. They will also provide a competency checklist of the tasks that your apprentice needs to master. Number five, support technical training instruction and time off to attend. Plan to release your apprentice from work duties as they need to attend technical training to fulfill their apprenticeship. Number six, prepare your journey person, which is such an important point. Get together and review the training materials so you both have a good feel for the program. Again, CAF has a lot of resources on, this, uh, on these supports if you're interested and you, and you need this information, I'm happy to provide it. Um, but we have resources such as Journey Person's Guide to Apprenticeship Training, which allows the journey person to evaluate their mentoring and coaching skills. And if needed, they can consider formal training at a local training institution of learning. Number seven, 
provide on the job training and pay your apprentices wages. Make sure your assigned journey person is available to train, supervise, and mentor your apprentice and has a schedule of the work processes to be completed. Pay the apprentice according to the preset wages, as I mentioned earlier, in the apprentice agreement. Number eight, monitor your apprentice's progress and keep accurate records. This is very important for paperwork purposes. Systematically track your apprentices on the job training, which means their hours and type of work, as well as instruction. In Ontario, you'll be provided with an official logbook training standard developed by OCOT, Ontario College of Trades, uh, which you can refer to on their website. Periodically evaluate your apprentice's progress to make sure they are developing the skills according to your standards. Number nine, keep in touch with your apprenticeship authority office. Throughout the apprenticeship period, notify your local apprenticeship authority if there are changes in your facility equipment or staffing, which could affect your ability to provide on-the-job training or supervision. Perhaps your company relocates or changes its mailing address or perhaps the apprentice leaves your company. Number 10, be proud of what you've accomplished. When training is completed, encourage your apprentice to write the examination to become a certified journey person. In Ontario, a letter of the completed training standard needs to be signed off by the employer. That's all great. Where do we find an apprentice now? The Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program, oh yeah, uh, is a great resource. Again, the School to Work Program opens the door for students exploring apprenticeship occupations in high school in grade 11 and 12. OYAP also offers students a chance to attend school and train as registered apprentices at the same time so they can really get a feel for uh, what they're interested in pursuing. Students are able to complete their credits required for an Ontario Secondary School Diploma and gain apprenticeship training hours in a skilled trade at the same time. The program is available to students who are at least 16 years of age and have completed 16 credits. We'd like to share a wonderful clip prepared by Rogers. An apprentice is a young person who is ready to learn and uh, just absorb all kinds of great information about a given trade. Ever since I was a little kid, I you know, always helped my dad cook in the kitchen, so it's always been a dream to be a cook. An apprentice is somebody who is interested in a skilled trade that is willing to put in um, a certain amount of work hours per year, usually around 2,000, and uh, apprenticeships generally last 6,000 to 8,000 hours, so an apprenticeship can be three to four years long. Getting my ticket was important to me. Um, being able to do all electrical work um, all across Canada, having a Red Seal trade, was uh, one of the um, important parts of starting an apprenticeship. Uh, an apprenticeship is, is certainly not an employment contract, it's an employment training agreement that the apprentice has with the employer um, and, and documented by the, the uh, apprenticeship counsellor through the Ministry of Colleges and Universities. Being paid to, to learn rather than paying to learn. And um, I also really like the concept of being in the workplace for most of the, the time in the year, 10 months and then two months in the in a classroom. Yeah, my dad's a tool maker as well. Um, I guess that really helped me to get into the trade. But uh, in high school I did uh, co-op and I enjoyed it then. Uh, one of the main reasons we like to take on apprentices is that the apprenticeship program is quite comprehensive. It involves 5,000 hours plus of working time. Uh, it involves two scrutinizing tests as well as a final exam. Um, it also involves signing off on and getting experience with every type of job you can do on a motorcycle. So taking on an apprentice shows that the employee or apprentice is quite committed to the industry, helps separate those who kind of want to work on motorcycles from those who want to make it into a career and take it seriously. Well, we have a small jobbing shop and it's always nice to take on an apprentice that you can train. and. My husband was an apprentice when he started out and he appreciated the knowledge and stuff taught to him by the journeyman that he worked with and so he wanted to give back by hiring and training an apprentice too. We hire from the college as co-op students, basically test drive the student uh, through co-op programs and then upon completion we uh, will sign them up for a particular apprenticeship which matches what they've uh, uh, done for training in school. 
For us, it is someone who is um, working full time um, in the program, getting paid, um, but is also going to school to learn more of the theory and background about the field that they're in. Um, so for us, it's early childhood education, and they would um, come out at the end of it with their diploma um, and be able to work as a registered early childhood educator. Real life experience, you're working in the field, you're working with a amazing employer that is willing to give you the education, to give you the support, to give you everything that you need to excel in your trade. Uh, when we look for apprentices, we look for someone that has some, uh, doesn't matter which trade we're looking at, we need someone that has uh, some mechanical aptitude, has some uh, ability to tinker. It's, you know, it's the, the kid that played with the Lego blocks. Uh, that uh, was uh, interested in building things because when we're hiring an apprentice as much as we may be hiring for the machine shop like you see in the background the ultimate goal is here to have a machine builder someone that's actually going to assemble machinery it is the culinary arts and people need to have some passion because the you know it's a creative uh, dynamic business and uh, the people that are in it certainly need to be creative and dynamic to be successful we take on apprentices uh, for several reasons. The legality, of course, the Ontario government does regulate who works on people's motorcycles. We do try and prevent just anybody from wrenching on them and repairing and customizing them to ensure a level of quality. So trying out the apprenticeship or taking on apprentices was somewhat enforced, but also uh, a good choice because now we can regulate the quality of work that goes onto the bikes. An apprentice is an employee, correct. They're treated like all our other employees. They're just an employee in training. Basically, the apprentices are our future. Um, when my partner Craig and I took over the company from his dad in the early 90s, we had probably at that time uh, 15 electricians, five apprentices. We currently have anywhere between 46 to 51 electricians and anywhere from 15 to 17 apprentices at any given time. Most of our electricians were apprentices here. Um, so they've come up to the rank, they've allowed us to grow the company, and they're trained to our, what we expect um, our apprentices to know. Good quality journey people, um, we can sell that to our customers. The apprentice program is really good because it allows you to earn a wage while you're also learning on the job.